it's Lee from ColouringQueen.net and today I've got Grazia Salvo's latest colouring book, Wild Soul. Now, Grazia is an Italian artist and this book is hardcover. She's released a number of colouring books and they are all gorgeous. She is known for her beautiful portraits of women. Now, on the back we can see these gorgeous thumbnails here of gorgeous women and beautiful animals accompanying them and the whole book is about the empathy between humans and animals as the front cover indicates and this text on the back. Now it is hardcover with a matte like finish. It's got a lovely white spine on there with two little paw prints either side which is a cute little touch. Now it may get damaged etc but it seems to me that it's a smudge proof cover that i.e. it's not going to show marks on it that's what it seems to me but I haven't had it in my bookshelf as yet now I'll just show you the sizing up against Joanna's World of Flowers so that you can see how big this beautiful book is and let's dive in So right at the start, we're given a few little treats, which I love treats. So we've got two little squirrels with mistletoe. They're both the same, and they'd be a great one to colour in for Christmas. They're on a thin cardstock. And on a thicker cardstock, we have this gorgeous little pixie or elf, and she's got some poinsettias there. So I imagine another great one for Christmas as well. Then we've got... Oh, this squirrel's coming from everywhere. <laughs> then we've got another little squirrel as well. So I don't know if that was a mistake and if I was meant to have so many squirrels um, <laughs> or not. But they're much appreciated. But don't be disappointed if you only get one squirrel with your book. I don't know if that was a mistake in uh, packaging the book up. So we start off with the cover and now if you get this first edition you'll get a numbered copy so mine's 529 out of 850 copies so only a relatively small print run. And that's the thing with these uh, beautiful colouring books, these luxurious ones. The print runs generally aren't that high. So at the front, we've got a whole list of the graphics that are included. So we have a massive range. Not only do we have birds, but domestic animals as well. So we've got feathers, fur, we've got butterflies. We've got all sorts of things, even jellyfish. So any sort of texture that you might be interested in it seems to be covered in this list of 30 graphics. Got a little note from Grazia over here. And then we get into the pictures and these are stunning. I think this might be her her best book yet. It they really are beautiful. So the first one is the flamingo. Now you can see that they're single page illustrations which is great because you've got all of those ancillary pages at the beginning where you can test out your mediums and see what suits you. Now they are close to the spine but there is a small little gap there so that you avoid actually colouring in the ditch because we all hate that. This is gorgeous this flamingo absolutely stunning and the beautiful woman look at her neck contrasting with the flamingo's neck now the paper is 150 grams and it's a lovely smooth off-white paper but it's got a, a very fine little texture to it very very fine now she's got little freckles across her nose and look at her little kitty isn't it gorgeous? And in the background we've got lighter flowers and this beautiful hair. She does the most amazing hair. Then we've got our gorgeous zebra. And I know everyone thinks zebras are black and white, but in reality when you see them, they've got a lot of other colours to them. And in order to get that black and white to dominate, 
you often have to put greys and browns and whatnot in there. And of course, just because zebras are black and white, and you might think there's nothing much to colour there, you can colour a zebra in whatever colour you fancy. But isn't this beautiful? Look how the zebra stripes are so dark. Then we've got this background that gradually fades out to nothingness. And these palm leaves are so light and soft. So many different styles of line work there. And she does this detail so beautifully, this soft shading. That's what I love about her work. All of this shading has been done for you. And really, you need to choose the colours and sort of add your own touches to it. But look at this beautiful detail on this dress. And then we've got the gorgeous panther. All the beautiful beads across there. And again, this different change in line art from the really soft to the dark. All that beautiful contrast in the background is already done for you. So now we've got these gorgeous ducks. And look at all her little freckles. Isn't it cute? Like you often don't see artists drawing freckles in on uh, portraits. So isn't that lovely? And different hairstyle again. The soft little ribbon. And no background on this one. So a bit of change. And we've got the red vulpa. And see how the hair on this one is very flowy, like the hair on the girl. And again, this line art in the back is very soft. It's almost pencil-like. And it darkens and graduates. Very distinctive line there. So she's really hit all the shading spots to make it pop when you colour it in. And look at this one, the Afghan hound. And look how the hair is just reflective of that. Look at its beautiful face. And the eyes are so similar too. Really is stunning, that picture. I love how she positions and centers her pictures too. Isn't this one gorgeous, the lemur? And then we've got this gorgeous deer and she's got a little bit of antler on her necklace. Might be a nice one for Christmas time. And this butterflies one is absolutely stunning. Look at the beautiful butterfly. It's virtually like a choker. And then we've got this gorgeous flower. And these ones are more pencil-like in the background. But isn't the hair that she does just amazing? Like look at this, the horse and the woman both have the amazing hair and the flaring nostrils and even the veins on the horse's face. It's really stunning. And look at all the texture on the chimpanzee so that you can just come in and just really add to it. And the detail on this lace work on her dress. Her pictures have uh, so much expression in them. Like this flower has a lot of soft shading on it and then this one is basically line up with just a little bit of shading. Probably so that it'll pop more against that background once you colour it in. And then we've got the German Shepherd. And this whole background of leaves. It's really beautiful. The lion that's on the front cover. And we've got feathers to soften it and then the beautiful mane that nose and the whole facial expression so I guess they're both sort of lions in their own way she's like a warrior princess lion we've got this gorgeous lamb and its curly little fur is reflected in the little afro hairstyle so it's really nice that there's a different ethnicities included as well as well as different hairstyles, different facial expressions, different facial positions. And there's also different embellishments in the hair. So there's hair clips, there's a ribbon in another one. 
Lots of beautiful feathers here. Got the gorgeous elephant and they've both got their headdress on. And no background this time on this one. But the positioning of it is really beautiful how it's just balanced out on that page. And there's our crystal jellyfish. So that's beautiful. And see how her hair is just covering her modesty. We've got the gorgeous peacock with very soft little feathered scales over here. Really, really soft. And then some of the line art is heavier and more firmer like these flowers as opposed to these lines on the hair which is quite soft. Absolutely beautiful book. I think it will keep me going all year and maybe next year as well. Now of course this one's going to be my favourite picture, the bunny rabbit. I can just imagine her in a beautiful soft dress. I need to practice doing those sorts of sheer soft dresses before I tackle that because it's got the bunny rabbit on it and I want to make sure that the bunny picture is beautiful. And then we've got the beautiful giraffes. So they're both wearing the same sorts of outfits and yeah, it's very sweet and these leaves are all in the background looking very soft. I like the positioning of this one too. There's actually not one picture in here that I don't like. I love them all. And I wish I knew how to colour like birds and stuff. I'm going to put that on my list to, to figure that out because I would really like to colour some of these images of the birds and that beautiful owl one. Look at these gorgeous penguins. This one looks like he's having a nap. And she's got very f faint diamond detail on this dress. And it looks virtually pencil-like. Now this is the one, the leopard. This is the one that I've going to start today I looked through and I thought which one is appealing to me and I've never colored in a leopard or or any sort of furry critter so except for that koala the other day which was a cutesy coloring so I want to give it a, a shot and <laughs> we'll see how it goes so I'm going to start on the leopard today with you guys that's why it's got the blue mark on it and she's got shorter hair, which I think is one of the first pictures in here with the short hair. Then we've got the calf with the detailed mandarin style dress. And again, the whole page of art. So it's really good if you have motor impairment and you don't like smaller pictures. And we've got the long-haired kitty. And they've both got the long straggly hair. This poor woman's probably like me and constantly vacuuming up kitty hair. The giant brown bear. And again she's got small detail on her dress here of little flowers. And then this line art in the back is a real contrast. And then we've got the wolf just looking over the three girls and they've got beautiful little feathers there. Feathers in the hair, so we've got feathers, fur, hair, so much fluffy stuff. And then we come to an end. Now Grazia has a Facebook group uh, that you could join in and you can post your pictures there or you can post them on Instagram and tag her. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start work on that leopard and I'm just going to grab my pencils and come back. So I've got my pencils ready and I do have to apologize for the lighting today. It's really overcast and it's been raining here today and I can't seem to get the lighting right. Now I've got my laminated piece of paper that I'm just going to pop behind just in case I press too hard with my pencils, not having done fur before. And go through on the other page and make indents so I'm just going to pop that behind and I'm going to start doing this beautiful leopard 
and I've never colored a leopard before so <laughs> we'll see how we go <laughs> so I'm gonna use my favorite pencils my Prismacolors and just because she's already got this with the beautiful greys etc in it I'm just going to add some long hairs and textures with this darker colour. Now I did go online and have a look at some pictures of leopards and some have got more white in them and some are like a brownie caramel colour and I mean I could have a pink leopard if I wanted to. I mean, it's a colouring book, it doesn't have to be realistic but I thought I'd give a crack to the, the realistic and we'll see. And I mean, Grazi has done all the, the hard yards with her shading so I just really need to sort of choose the right colours perhaps and uh, bring them through and sort of stroke it in where I think it needs. So I don't think I need to have a huge amount of strokes to demonstrate the fur. Could be wrong. And I'm starting over this side so I can work out how to do the strokes. And those uh, spots, I'll come through with like a dark brown or a black or a, an espresso and darken those up at the end once I've done the, the base of fur, I guess. So, we'll see how we go. Just going to darken this up. And it's fur, so it doesn't have to be perfect, I guess, because fur, like hair, gets rumpled and tangled and looks messy. And although leopards look pretty smooth from the pictures, but they still have fur, so it doesn't all lay flat, just like you know, the hairs on your legs and the hairs on your arms and whatnot, they don't all lay in one direction. They, they have different directionalities, I guess. So, we'll see. We'll see how we go here. And she's got quite a lot of strokes here. So if you've coloured fur before, you know, let me know in the comments below any tips or tricks that you might have. I'm always happy to learn. And I've really decided this year to, to push myself and do things that are uncomfortable for me or different, just so I can learn more. So I've been at this hobby for years now but most of it has been spent actually doing reviews or being sick and not a lot of it has been spent in colouring. So this year I'm trying to do what I was going to do four years ago <laughs> before life took a, a twist. So hopefully that will work out. And I'm thinking that these lines here that that's a change in fur directionality for the cheeks and these other these lines here that are the darker black I'll probably go over with a darker brown black or a sepia or something like that to darken those up at the end so I'm not missing them I just uh, I'm going to save those till the end I'm just following along basically on Grazia's strokes and maybe making them a bit fluffier.
and I'm not bothered at all if I'm not above her stroke because as I said fur is meant to be messy and her strokes will be underneath so I think they'll provide the the depth uh, that you would hope for with a fluffy animal. I'm hoping these assumptions that I'm making are correct <laughs> but we'll soon see. Now on the pictures that I looked at on Google the faces were the under the mouth piece they were a lighter colour um, virtually white or grey so I'm not going to put the brown in there but I mean I could have always just done it pink and purple it doesn't have to be natural so I hope everyone's having a good day today Uh, it was meant to rain yesterday here and it never happened so then late last night it started raining and it hasn't stopped so hopefully some parts of Australia that really could do with some rain are getting it as well So I'm just going to add some more colour here. I'm not sure what to colour her outfit in. I'm thinking red and navy, but with brunette hair and brown hair, with maybe some caramelly highlights so that it looks nice with the warm coloured tones of the animal, but I'm not really sure. I haven't <laughs> haven't haven't made any commitments <laughs> so far to that. We'll think about that one later. We'll try and get the leopard done first. So I've just been uh, doing some housework today and editing some videos. I don't know what takes me so long really. It's not like I've got the most spotless house in the world, I haven't. But I seem to spend way too much time pottering around doing housework. And it makes me wonder how I ever got it done when I used to work two jobs or two or three jobs and go to uni. I think I'll leave that bit that colour so it can be sort of white grey on that bit. I think that's what I'll do. So there's a lot of people that specialise in doing animal portraits lately. I've seen some ads on, I think it's Facebook, where they'll, you send them a picture of your animal and they'll dress it up in a a funny outfit and send you a poster, <laughs> which I was thinking of, uh, you know, Millie as a little witch, I think that would be funny. I'd love to be able to uh, do a cat in one of these books that looks like Millie and a dog that looks like Charlie, but because they're both so fluffy, I'm, I'm worried that I won't be able to get the fur right. <laughs> both of them. I think that's what I spend all my life to is is picking up fur. And so today I haven't really achieved anything so far. 
I mean, it's not even lunchtime yet, but other than the housework and I looked up some pictures uh, for the leopard to get some ideas from Google on what sort of colours and I guess I did spend a bit of time working out what colours to use because that's always my hard point. I don't know how people do it uh, that choose colours so easily. No idea. I guess uh, it's experience like most things but some people seem to know naturally which colour to gravitate to and which one will achieve the, the ultimate look that they want. But not this girl. I have huge angst over <laughs> choosing colours and I think it's why I like uh, colour by number books sometimes because you don't need to think about it. And with these books by uh, Grazia, this is all based on realistic things so you can use Google Images and then you can use an app, I can't remember what it's called, and it basically puts an eyedropper on the image and tells you whether what colour it is in Prismacolor and Polychromo. Now I'm sure it's probably not going to be a hundred percent accurate but it's kind of a starting point. Or you can use like an eyedropper you know graphics program like paint and run it over a picture and get ideas of what colours are just within that small section and then compare it to your swatch sheets. Now I say all of that but it still takes me forever and a day to choose any colour for myself so it seems so much easier <laughs> than what it is and I don't know whether I've selected the right colours here for the leopard but we'll see. Yeah, and if someone's got ideas for the clothes, I'm thinking red for the for the skivvy and then navy blue for this with maybe gold buttons and a gold zipper. And then a, a sort of brown hair with caramelly highlights and red lips. So if someone's got suggestions if that would work or not. Someone more experienced than moi. But I'm thinking because they're warm colours that they would work. But maybe it needs more contrast. So we really have to do some grocery shopping today, I know that. We have got hardly anything left in the house, so much so that last night's dinner was spaghetti on toast, which kind of reminds me of uni student days. But actually, I don't mind it. It's kind of comfort food, isn't it? And on a rainy night, it started raining. It's kind of nice sometimes to have something like that. I don't know if any of you guys go to a Facebook group called Rate My Plate and people post pictures of the creations that they've made and then everyone just basically slams them usually. But, um, it is hilarious though. It's hilarious when people um, post things just to get a laugh on purpose, you know. Like their leftovers that are quite mangy or their frozen dinner or something like that. But they've got another group that's called Rate My Cake. 
and I love cooking by the way so I like looking at these groups but I would never put a picture of anything that I've done in Rate My Plate because they're vicious <laughs> and you might like it but um, man do they slam you'd have to have a really thick skin to uh, to put your things in there but uh, they've got a sister group called uh, Rate My Cake and they don't slam and they put the most beautiful cakes in there that they've decorated to look like all sorts of things. There's so many talented and uh, amazing people out there. Am I getting this fur? I feel like I feel like uh, I need a bit more of the dark. Yeah, but some people there. I used to do cake decorating when I was a kid and you know some of my cakes won prizes at the show and all the rest of it but bear in mind I was from a country area so there probably wasn't a lot of competition but you know it was still nice and but these cakes that these people decorate oh my god they're amazing the things that they come up with and it's taken them days to create or just a lady had a Tiffany box cake the other day and it had a Tiffany box with a present in it inside the cake that looked like a Tiffany box. And there's people that do like a whole Harry Potter cakes and the imaginations. I can't remember all of them now that I want to, but they are gorgeous. And then on the other group, the uh, Rate My Plate, there's a guy that always, he cooks, hello, hello my wild soul, no darling, darling don't do that please, Mill, why don't you go back to your, your chair and have a nap nap. <sighs> You can't see it, but she's actually nudging the tripod. So I hope she doesn't uh, nudge it right off. She's a little monkey. It's funny, she'll be asleep. And then as soon as I pick up a pencil, she's awake and wants to, to be in the picture. She's such a little performer. But what was I saying? Yeah, there's a guy on uh, Rate My Plate and he, he hooks up some nice things, sort of comfort food. But he always has a huge story, like an essay, that he writes to go along with it. And it's really... I get really involved in reading them and I kind of look forward to his essays that accompany his uh, dish of the day. And they're just mundane things about life or where he walked to or he teaches piano and the student's not very interested and but he still gets paid for it. I think it's his relative or something like that. But I kind of look forward to seeing what he's made even though it's often not my cup of tea. But because of the story that goes along with it, Oh, it's funny, the things that keep us amused, I guess. So I think there's just creativity, you know, wherever you go. Like, the guy cooking up the comfort food and the creative way he presents it with a, an essay. And a, a lot of people slam him and just say, you know, put the picture up and, you know, we don't want to know your life type thing. But a lot of people like me really uh, enjoy his stories and look forward to it. So there's like the creativity in the cooking and the story. And then there's the creativity of like the cake making, cake decorating group. And then we've got our art and our planners and our colouring books and mixed media and so much in the colouring world. So there's just so much creativity in this world, you know, wherever you might look. I think I've gone a bit wild with the, the strokes over there. I, I might need to... 
think I've uh, made a mess there. I might need to either rub that out or soften it up, but we'll see. I've got the directionality a little bit wrong, I think, on how the hair goes. Maybe, maybe it just needs more loving. Now these pencils are going well on uh, the book, which is what I really wanted to test is how the Prismacolors work. Usually when I've bought Grazia's uh, books in the past, I've bought them as a digital download. And then I've just printed them out uh, on my own paper. So I think this might actually be my first Grazia book that I've actually bought in hard copy. I think I, I just do want to take that out a bit. So I feel like I lost my way with those pencil strokes. I'd better take it out now before we get too far. Maybe take this one out too. So I'm just trying to think about how the fur would go on the face. Like it would come down here and then I'm guessing it would come down in this way. Hmm. I never thought I would be uh, contemplating fur directionality on a rainy day. great thing about the rain is I put a lot of new plants in over the weekend and the other day. I had more plants than what I thought uh, in pots that had been sitting there where I'd promised to plant them and they hadn't made it out of the pot for weeks. And a lot of them I needed David to dig a big hole for me. The gr ground here is very hard. And usually I, I put them in planter boxes because it's clay and they don't usually perform well with the clay soil. But some of them do. But all this lovely rain, now that I've finally got to plant some out the other day, and all the mulch that I just put in, and the compost, and the uh, dynamic lifter, which is a... a fertilizer should be doing great stuff for my new plants I'm hoping so I'm happy enough with what's happening with the face like where it's going I'm not happy with this but we'll see how it turns out I tend to often be very judgmental uh, before the picture is finished and sometimes I abandon them because I think it's not going to turn out uh, the way I thought or hoped and you know maybe it's because I didn't give them enough of a chance so I'm really trying to work on that this year and finish pictures and even if I think that uh, i would lost my way with them, that I'll still finish them and, you know, learn from them and learn from the experience even, even if I felt they weren't exactly what I intended. So isn't it um, Bob Ross that used to say there's happy accidents? So maybe something that I think is not 
what I wanted uh, might be a happy accident. And I think maybe once I add in uh, the black and darken it up, that this section might improve. So. And I'm sort of basing the way the nose hair goes on the way Millie's nose hair goes. <laughs> so. Hopefully, hopefully that's a good theory. But the good thing is, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And I'm thinking that uh, I actually should have followed these uh, little black dots more because see how they go up and down like that and that's that's probably where the fur directionality is meant to be but again you know fur doesn't really sit straight it goes all over the place when you look at it up close it might you know look smooth from a distance but when you look at it up close it's probably all different directions just like the hairs on uh, your legs or your arms or even your eyebrows so I'm really glad that all of the shading is already here because for someone like me that's never done fur before I've got to say it's 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 scary and I've never done feathers so you know when we do the the feather picture <laughs> that's going to be frightening too but this year is the year of getting out of my comfort zone so i got to be up for anything and then I think um, I'll truly know what I like colouring rather than the things that I'm comfortable with colouring and that can be good because it'll help me narrow down the types of books that I want to keep in my collection and the ones that I want to add to it and I'm actually I don't want to sound a bit super confident but I'm actually really happy with the face I'm not so happy with the body though and I can't resist I've got to rub it out and at least we know that the prisma colors are rubbing out easy but I think I've overdone it here and I don't think you know my personality can just let it go <laughs> I have to have to redo it but I am happy with the way the face is coming along and I think once this is just like white with a bit of grey that that's going to turn out the way that I'm hoping it's the body that I feel I need to redo a bit and I think I might have added too much to it and not giving it enough room to add extra layers if that makes sense. So what I might do is finish working on the face with you guys and then tackle that body off camera and then later on we'll come back and not today, it's starting to really rain heavily here now. Later on we'll come back and we'll tackle the rest of her outfit and her hair and if anyone's got ideas whether that red and blue red and navy combo would work well love to hear and let me know what you're coloring in today in the comments below or if you're crafting or reading or working 
How are you spending time today? I know so many of us have busy lives and it's often difficult just to even find time to to do things. And so what I was thinking of doing was that you know, when I've got 15 minutes or whatever, I might just use that 15 minutes to find the pencils that I want to use for a picture. And then, uh, you know, 15 minutes to choose a picture. I should actually have done that in the reverse order, shouldn't I? So choose the picture and then one day, so they spend 15 minutes doing that. And then finding a picture, uh, finding the pencils that I want to use, spend uh, 15 minutes on that on one day. Because often I find I sit down to colour something and I don't know what it is that I want to colour in. And then because I've got so many books here and if you've been around for a while you know that I only have some of my books here not all of them but still I have quite a lot of choice and I can spend way too long looking at the pictures rather than actually colouring something so if I just limit it to 15 minutes one day look for the book that I fancy and then 15 minutes one day getting the mediums or the, and choosing the colours that I want to use and then Hopefully, you know, I get 15 minutes just to do my own colouring, so not colouring on camera, but my own colouring. Because I've promised myself this year that I will do my own colouring and practising and trying to make inroads in this beautiful hobby that's been so much a part of my life but yet I haven't uh, really got to colour much in. So this year is the year that hopefully uh, I can do what I set out to do back in 2016 when I started this uh, channel. So I'm thinking that other than that white on the face and the grey that I'm pretty happy with the combo here and yeah but this bit I'm going to redo and I think I might need to soften some of these uh, lines out but I'll add some more, but I think it's a pretty good start. And add some black and whatnot in. So hopefully next time you see this picture, the leopard will have been completed and it'll just be the face and outfit that needs to be done. So that's it from me for my start of Wild Soul. Thank you for joining me on this journey into the unknown of fur. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please click the subscribe button above. And if you like to see videos like this whenever I upload, click on that bell and you'll be notified. Until next time, happy colouring.